Good question. Well, it certainly evolved. Um, I mean, I like the idea of, I mean, I, I do stuff called tape noise. I like the idea of being in the background. Uh, also, with the Weird Garden, it was like, for me, doing art or, or music was really important for just meeting people who were similar, really. So the idea of the, of the decimal place was to create a space where things could happen. You weren't kind of in control of it, you just created a space and then through the sort of cumulative power of people, things grew like a garden. And um, it's really evolved over its sort of, you know, I don't know how long. Decimal Place been there about 15 years and Weird Garden's just had its 10th year. And it definitely, there is something about when people get together, there is something over and above what we normally know that happens. And it's all just down to that kind of, uh, you know, getting together really. That cooperative sort of idea. And the, the idea of a garden is, you know, you things grow and you just don't help them, but then they grow themselves. And, uh, you know, the fact that it's not got a lot of status is a good sort of filter, really, because people who are into that kind of idea stay away. So you've got, like, real genuine sentiment there and something really precious, you know. That's... And why weird? Why weird gardens as opposed to a weird one? Well, what's, what things that are obscure and, you know, like wildflowers, they don't normally don't necessarily strike you straight away as being like the most sort of important thing. And I mean, I always felt like I was a bit of a weirdo, you know, compared to other people. And I've always sort of related to that kind of idea. And it's also there's like a you know I like the way that it's like weird, weird and weed. You know, like the difference between a what is the difference between a proper plant and a weed? It's really you know, who decides who wants a weed and what's a flower. And, yeah. Any questions? I think so. What was the response from the media when you first set up? <laughs> well, generally, I've um, been very good. I've only had a couple of things, really. I mean, we always try and keep it not too loud and finish by 10. Uh, and I've had a few run in, I've had plenty of run ins with authorities over different things, but you know, you can usually sort of persuade them. I mean, like the performing, you know, the PRS people like that, you know, they, what, they have rules that really prohibit a lot of spaces. A lot more could go on, but they, they have these rules that stop things happening, and that's what's wrong at the moment. Is, there's not enough opportunity, I don't think. So it's always about going against that. And, uh, you know, instead of having loads of rules and you know, everything being controlled, it's kind of, I like the idea of it being a sort of a free space where you know, things can happen and maybe it doesn't always go the way you want, but you know, generally it does, you know. So yeah, I mean, touch wood. We're okay with the neighbours at the moment. But, uh, any, any more questions? I think so. Were you surprised at how many people here have got similar to you when you first set up? Well, yeah, that's always been, you know, I mean, because I went to art college after school and, you know, I always slam that there's quite people who are creative often are a bit marginalised and, you know, you do come across like-minded people all the time and but you need to sort of create something that, that can, that, that is a common sort of point so that you can get together, have a reason to get together, but I think there are lots of people who think the same and the system doesn't recognise a lot of talents, you know. And, um, so it's been very rewarding in that, in that way. Mm. Yeah.
Each of yourself is a performance artist or a musician or a sound artist or a composer? Well, I didn't really, I never really known. You know, I'm, I, I started off doing sort of painting and poetry, and then what attracted me to doing more music was just when, you know, painting and poetry can be quite a solitary thing, whereas music always seems to be a lot more of a social event, and that's why I sort of moved more into that. But I think the crossover is what's really interesting as well, you know. And I don't like the way you get sort of pigeonholed. I mean, art seems to be full of the hierarchy and the classification and the pigeonholing, and I really don't like that. And I mean, I did go to art college and did, did study in it and, and did postgrad study, but seemed to be all about proving how marvellous you were and very quickly what you actually did became less important. You know. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm always interested in the idea of rubbish. That's why I like using, doing painting by Chris Patrick and him. What do we, we think of, you know, like recycling, we're always, we're inevitably recycling a lot of things. And in a really sort of efficient system, there isn't any rubbish. You know, look at nature, not just wasted. So that's that's one of the sort of themes. Did anything ever come of the um, the way the Chris Patrick suddenly appeared in the art galleries? Um, so the the thing that comes from Chris Patrick and then and this year he sort of disappeared away into something. Yeah, I can't claim. I mean, lots of people do recycling stuff. Which one do you mean then? No, I was just, I was just um, saying about the stuff that he was doing with all the, the crisp jackets for the performance uh, and then all of a sudden this last year it just sort of sprinkled, appeared everywhere from the internet. Well, I don't know. Quite annoyed, quite <coughs> how odd. I think uh, people are, I mean ideas sort of go around, don't they? And people see things and they're influenced by it. And that's the beauty of art and music really. That, we're all constantly influenced by what we hear and what we see and you know that's the whole idea of art really is ideas get the chance to sort of go out there and that's where the status thing that can get in the way of that you know I mean you see how how important art has been for you know like general, spreading really important ideas and giving people a chance to you know feel good about themselves that's what counts, not really whether you're up there or down there or whatever. Um, yeah, but if someone's been influenced by it, maybe that's fine by now. Yeah. Has it gone the way that you wanted it to go? Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I can't, I haven't really had a sort of a plan, so, you know, what's, what's interesting is how it evolves, really, how things evolve. I mean, you know, when you plant a garden, you never know what it's going to look like. You don't want it to all die out, but you can't sort of have too high expectations. You've got to go with it, you know. So I think that's what's really important is if you if you sort of start to think, oh, it should be like this or it should be like that, that's when you can actually get in the way of what happens. So I think it's important to step, take a step back. That's your expectation. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have sort of expectations, you know, I mean, I'm pleased when people turn up and the main thing is that people are enjoying, the, enjoying it and feeling like they're doing something for themselves and they're not like, you know, promoting something else or, you know, it's not about one person, it's not about me, it's not about anyone else, it's about everybody, it's about sort of recognising that, you know, all I've done is plant a seed and I haven't really done what else, you know, I mean, it's, um, I don't want it to sort of, you know, that's why I don't really, I don't really feel very good about being here talking about it, because it's not me who's done anything, it's everybody who's been involved, it's, it's a collective thing, and I'm not really any, you know, great, I'm not an important part of it, 
really, and just the one that sort of set it up for me. Well, it's not about underestimating it, it's about, you know, I've, I, I think it's important that everybody who's been involved is, you know, credited with what they've done. You know, like Pete, I mean, we are gone, we'd never have got anywhere without Pete sort of pushing me on times when I thought, oh, I can't do this anymore. You sort of kept, you didn't really inspire me to keep going. And Andy's done a lot. I mean, everybody sort of, you know, because like when I, when I do stuff on my own, I quickly lose faith in it and give up. But when you get a group of people, it's like momentum then. And you, it helps overcome those. And for me, it's been really important. You know, I mean, I, I've benefited a lot mentally from it. And that's what's important to me. And, um, I don't want to sort of feel like um, anyone is, you know, less important than I am. And maybe finally, what's in store for the next 10 years of Weird Garden? <laughs> Good question. Sounds like people want it, doesn't it? I think it's, you know, it definitely evolved, so it could keep evolving. You know, we're trying to keep decimal place going, and we're just having to do repairs there. I've got the scaffolding up, it's quite a, you know, it's, it is quite, quite expensive keeping it going. If, if anybody knows how to get some funding to help pay for it, that would be much appreciated. Uh, seems to be rather you know, difficult, that, but you know, that's the only sign of it. It is a bit of a strain sometimes, is, but you know, that's just like life. Isn't it? I ask you one other question because I missed the beginning. But do you think there's an advantage to doing the kind of interesting kind of scene and kind of experimental music and art things? There's an advantage of being living in a place that isn't really in the middle of considered to be in the middle of things. Yeah, well, yes. I think it's. I think that's the thing. Like, you know, it's like a filter when you sort of, you know, when when you're kind of a bit under the people don't know what you're doing, you're not sort of like got loads of reputation. The people who come, come for genuine reasons. Like, yeah. I mean, I used to be involved in things when I was at art college and that, and postgrad and all that, where, you know, you had a lot of status and it seemed to be that everybody was wanting that status and that's what I really disliked about that. And so I think it's, I think it's really good if you're really out of the main, out of that, because people are just more genuine and they, you know, they come I was struck by the thing that Marcus says, who set up the ex-church in Gainsborough saying that he, he opened an art gallery in Gainsborough because it's a place where artists could afford to live. Yeah. Rather well, than a place where people who thought they were cultured would go to view fine art. You know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, well, sort of, and you can point. see how that similarly, there's a lot of overlap, obviously. But mm, yeah. It collects people around it, you know. Well, I remember that gallery. I mean, it was really, you know, it was like a revelation when it opened, you know. Yeah. And, you know, because I mean, I'm from Lincoln, so that's where I've been back from there. Um, I think it is, you know, it's really good to make people think outside of what is, you know, considered to be top or, and I think, you know, we're living in a time when there seems to be a lot of emphasis on being a celebrity or being a billionaire or whatever, and, you know, there's far too much emphasis on that. It's like whenever you look in the newspaper or look on the Telly, it's always people are always have to be celebrities or they have to be rich or you know look at the government they're always sort of from that background and it's sort of normal people are getting left behind you know but anyway that's starting all out <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I think I've said enough now I don't want to... that's right thank you very much well thank you. Thank you.